All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the Molesburg panel. For this hour, there'll be another Molesburg panel in the next hour. But in this uh, session, it's Larry Elder, uh, radio host of The Larry Elder Show and author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. There it is on your screen. And Christopher Hahn, Democratic strategist, syndicated radio host. All right, gentlemen, um, earlier uh, we spoke, well, we spoke about it with both, uh, um, both guests in the previous segment. But let me ask you about uh, this uh, Saudi snub. Mm -hmm at the Gulf uh, Nation Summit, which, uh, of course, both uh, countries are going out of their way to say it's not a snub. Uh, but, uh, Larry, uh, you know, the king of Saudi Arabia on Friday d decides basically that he's not going to come, and he didn't come. And uh, now there's even a report out that uh, Vladimir Putin might uh, snub John Kerry tomorrow and send an emissary there. Well, as far as Saudi Arabia is concerned, uh, this is all about Iran. Uh, they feel that the Obama administration is being rooked by Iran, that Iran is slow walking the Obama administration towards a nuke, and therefore it's going to jumpstart a nuclear arms race uh, in the Middle East, including Saudi Arabia. Uh, they believe that Obama made uh, threats to Syria about the red line, and then uh, they crossed the red line. He did nothing about it. He feel, they feel that he is a feckless ally, uh, and that's what this is all about. Uh, isn't this a show of disrespect to Obama and sending a message, Christopher? I, I don't think so, I, and I'm amazed at Larry's insight into the Saudi kingdom. I just think it's an old dictator that doesn't want to leave his homeland when there's a lot of unrest going on very close to his home, specifically in Yemen and other parts of the region. Look, it's good to be the king. You don't have to go anywhere you don't want to go, even if you cha change your mind at the last minute. And this guy is doing that, and so are some of the other dictators from that region. As for Putin, look, I mean, we didn't go to his victory in Europe uh, 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 celebration over the weekend, and now he might snub John Kerry. I don't think this has anything to do with any disrespect to President Obama, as some would like to paint it. Well, I mean, uh, Larry, I mean, it, it, you know, if, if Kerry d does get snubbed, I, I w I, I'd have to believe that it's a direct... Uh, Putin being Putin and saying, hey, if the Saudis are doing it to Obama, I'll do it to Kerry. Why not? Let's spit in their face some more. That's exactly what's going on. And Chris, uh, listen to what some of the Arab leaders have been saying about this deal. They are not happy. They believe that this deal is a weak deal. They believe that the Iranians will cheat. They believe that the Iranians will, in fact, use a nuclear bomb to threaten them. They've said so. They are very up upset about this deal. I, I, you know what? Look, I, I've heard a lot of unrest in the Middle East, a lot of uh, complaints about the deal in the Middle East. We are still working out the details of this deal. And frankly, it's a historic step in the right direction. Now, if the deal turns out to be a flop, Congress will have some authority to kind of work on it. And we'll see if we can change it or, or, or nullify it altogether. But that said, I don't think this has anything to do with people not coming here. Quite frankly, just the opposite. If they were really concerned about the deal, wouldn't they want an audience with the president of the United States to try to influence him in making this deal? I think they probably would. Well, you know, I, I, Congressman Mark Pompeo is in so it, it called, uh, had very harsh words for the Senate vote on this, uh, this Iran thing. But, you know, we played a soundbite for the congressman, uh, uh, Christopher, and uh, you got Joe Biden saying that they already have the bomb. In other words, they're already this close to the bomb. And if we don't have this deal, then their breakout time will be, uh, you know, just a month or two, and they'll have eight nuclear bombs. Now, Obama has always said they'll never get the bomb on his watch. If they're that close, hasn't his, uh, his watch been a colossal failure? Well, no, because we're making this deal and they're not going to get the bomb. Oh, I, don't okay. that that, I don't know that what Joe Biden said is accurate. And, you know, you're always quick to point out his inaccuracy. So let me point <laughs> out that he might not be exactly accurate here. So, uh, but again, I think this deal is going to stop them from getting a bomb, bring them into the community of nations. Community of nations, show their, Larry. Show their, but, 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 but Steve, show their citizens what free markets and capitalism can do for them. And I think that's a good thing. While they're, while they're right. holding our hostages and while they're taking over Yemen. I and wait, 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 wait. And going to war with Israel at the same time, we're going to welcome them in to the capitalism Steve, nobody's world. Nobody's welcoming in. We're coming back. Don't effort. go away. I didn't start out as the fully firm, formed first lady who stands before you today. No, no, I had my share of bumps along the way. But as potentially the first African-American first lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, conversations sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. Was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? 
I, 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 me, 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 my, mine, 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 I, me, me, me. Oh, this is your graduation? I forgot. Uh, welcome back to the Molesburg panel. Larry Elder and Christopher Hanna here. Uh, Christopher, uh, basically she's crying racism. What a tough time she had uh, when uh, Obama was running for, for president and she was uh, running for to be the first uh, black first lady. She was taken to test for this and for that. Uh, you would think she didn't say, I've never been proud of my country until recently. And you think she didn't say, uh, we're a downright mean nation. Uh, we're a nation uh, that, that, uh, that knocks you down and won't, doesn't pick you up. And that quote is in New Yorker magazine, March of 2008, when someone followed her around and wrote a 16-page story on her stump speech. I mean, this woman brought it on herself. I think that uh, she was absolutely right in what she said. I think that she's been under the microscope more than any first lady has ever been, not just because American, just because of the state of our media today. But I think being African American played a big role in it. Look at how people blew out of proportion her giving her husband a fist bump on the stage. I mean, I give people fist bumps, and I'm as white as they come. So I mean, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand why she's given a special level of scrutiny other than the fact that she's an African-American woman. And yes, she was. And I think she's performed gracefully. And I think she's been a tremendous uh, first lady. I think she's a, a big role model for all women all across this country, right. whether it be black, white or something right. else. Well, tell it to the kids who won't eat the garbage she puts on their plates at school. That's been going on around the country. But Larry, what do you mean? Fruits and vegetables? Are yeah, and, garbage yeah, they, yeah. Instead of food that they really want to eat. That's you what mean they're not what, eating like it. apple slices? Christopher, ah. Christopher, it's been go. Have you not been looking? It's been going on all over the country. They don't want what she's selling and they're well, not they eating eat it. They're not eating it, Christopher. But, Larry, I got to move on. Larry, uh, l let me let me ask you. Never been proud of her country. What other first lady running for office or running for first lady ever said that? And then again, we're a downright mean nation. Nobody ever came in with that in their heart. She did. All first ladies are under a great deal of scrutiny. I would imagine it is a difficult job, but this particular first lady has had a long history of engaging in what I call BMW, and that stands for bitch, moan, and whine. She's at, uh, at Princeton. She writes, a, uh, writes her thesis on how oppressed she felt. Uh, then she graduates from Harvard Law. She goes to a very shishi law firm in Chicago where she meets President Obama. She gets a great job with a hospital, gets a big increase after Obama becomes a, a senator. She's had a very, very, very rough life. Yeah, well, I just she think she ought to have a little bit of perspective. So, I mean, let's, let's not forget where she got her education. And, and, she, and for her to get that job, she had to have gone to an Ivy League institution at that point in time. I think she's been a phenomenal first lady. And let me tell you something. Chris, if kids Chris, don't want to eat their the vegetables. She's been phenomenal. The, the question is, why is she whining so much? That's I don't think she is. I don't think, I think she is she at is. all. I think that I think that you're blowing her comments out of proportion. I think they were perfectly reasonable, and I think it was exactly how she was treated in this country. And as for the vegetables, oh, every kid needs loud. to eat she their did, vegetables she, and not look. We've got an obesity problem in this in this country. The kids don't want to eat their vegetables. That's the problem. They she want to have to McDonald's the finest, for lunch. She goes to the finest magnet school in Chicago. Then she goes to Princeton. Then she goes to Harvard. Then she works for a, a law firm where the starting salary yeah, for a 25 year old is 160 thousand dollars, and she's still worrying about how fresh she is. I don't want to hear about it brilliant and she's dedicated the last eight years of her life to public service and we should be very happy that she did so and, and, and Chris there are people in this country like my father who does not know who his biological father is left home when he was 13 years old Jim Crow South yeah. Athens Georgia during the Great Depression that is the typical story of black people in America and Michelle yeah. Obama came from a two-parent household and I'm sure uh, your dad has never complained about anything wait wait wait, 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 wait Chris like I, 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 I think she needs perspective that's all I, I think she's got perspective. I think you're right. She probably she probably doesn't have the same perspective your dad has, but she's got plenty of perspective, and I'm sure you could agree with me on that. All right, guys. Hard work wins. She ought to be talking about and she getting worked an education very hard, and she has clearly won, Larry. And, and, and La Christopher, and do you won. know that she has about 25 times the, the personal assistance and staff that any other first lady has had? Do you know that? I don't know that that's true. Well, I, I've, I've seen it written over and over well, and over to, again. She has to deal with all the racism. Let Larry, Larry talk. Larry, Larry, go ahead. It takes a big staff to deal with all that racism. And, well, and, 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 and the trip, and Christopher, the separate vacations that cost the taxpayer money, that, that flying one day later to the same location or eight hours later because one, one spouse couldn't wait for the other, it really, it really gets a little tiresome. But yeah, gentlemen, and this is a conversation both sides have about every president. Uh, it doesn't, ever, it didn't happen with other presidents. Hey guys, thank you. Christopher Hunt, Larry Elder, thank you. Hey. Malik Zulu Shabazz joins me next, folks. But first, we brought back the viewer call-in segment here on the Steve Malzberg Show. So if you want to be a part of it, you have to reach out to us first. So send me an email and do it now. Call Steve 
at Newsmax.com. Call Steve at Newsmax.com. Put your name, of course, your, uh, where you are, and how we could reach you during the day, and we'll try to set it up. We'll get back to you because we want to hear from you. Malik Zulu Shabazz is next. Don't go away.